So friends, after knowing the difference between Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction, let us now further move into Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. Remember, this diffraction is only for a single slit. So now, let me draw the diagram, the schematic diagram of diffraction of Fraunhofer by a single slit. This is the schematic diagram for Fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit. This here is the source, source of light. From here, the beams of light are passing through this lens that is labeled as L1. This is the slit that is point A here to point B present here. Let this point B point O passing through another lens that is labeled as L2. So these we are considering these three beams from here A, O and B getting diffracted passing through this lens finally reaching the screen and touching it at this point we are naming it as P. You can see I have do uh, dotted line with a pen I have drawn this to show you that if this lens would not be there then the behavior of light would be through this dotted path. And let this point that should be the destination of light beams be O dash. So the distance between P and O dash, let this distance be considered as Xn. So this is our screen. Let these angles be. theta that is the deviation of light beam due to this lens L2. So this schematic diagram shows apparently how the front of a diffraction arrangement works. So after understanding the diagram let us now understand the process very briefly. Then we will further move down to the derivations of front of a diffraction. Here the source is placed at the principal focus of lens L1. So this will be the focal length. This distance will be the focal length of the lens L1. Hence by the laws this rays that are arriving from the source that are kept in the principal focus of lens L1 and the lens L1 and turn these rays into straight light beams. So, these straight light beams reach the slit that is illuminates the slit. Since it is parallel beams, it makes a plane wavefront. And illuminates the slit that is labeled as AB. Let O be the center of this slit. We always remember that the width of the slit is much bigger compared to the breadth of the slit. So AO and OB are symmetrical distances. And in the previous section, we have learned Huygens principle. Hence, we can say, according to Huygens principle, when the plane wavefront occupies the plane of the slit, that is this plane, all the particles in the aperture become secondary sources of disturbances. Each of such vibrating particles send out waves, that is the aperture here becomes the secondary source of light or secondary source of particle vibration. So each of such vibrating particles send out waves. Some disturbances will move in the original direction that is this direction and some are deviated that is diffracted at some angle that I have drawn with this dotted line and this red colored line. So this is the original path 
that some of the particles very few particles move and this is the red line that is the line of deviation and where the angle of deviation is theta the undeviated secondary disturbances that is the dotted line will be brought to a focus at the point o dash that i have drawn here on the screen in same phase by another convex lens that i have drawn here that is named as l2 hence the undeviated disturbance give rise to central maximum at point o dash so we have got the central maxima or the central maximum point at o dash here is the central maximum point that is made by the undeviated light beams but the secondary disturbances those diffracted through a certain angle that is this angle and we are talking about this beams that are the secondary disturbances that are deviated by an angle theta will form another parallel beam that is these beams that again get deviated by the lens l2 this beam will be brought to focus to another point that i have named here as p on the screen in different phase due to their unequal path to reach the point p if the lens would not be there all the paths traveled by all these beams would be equal but due to this lens this is undeviated rays and hence the path will be different so some of these disturbances will reinforce as the secondary maximum at p and some of this will destroy secondary minimum that is this region this region is the minimum and this region is the secondary minimum so here we have got the central maximum that is the primary maximum and here at p we have got the secondary minimum now after understanding this diagram how the front of a diffraction works let us point down some of the characteristics of front of a diffraction so what are the characteristics as i have already told you in the schematic diagram number 1 is that this kind of diffraction that is the front of a diffraction consists of one central maxima that is here in our diagram labeled as o dash and followed by alternate secondary maxima and minima on either side so only one will be central maxima and then there will be secondary minima and secondary maxima in the both side so followed by secondary maxima or minima number 2 is that the width the width of central maxima width of central maxima is twice that is equal to two times that is 2 into the width of secondary maxima number 3 is that the intensity goes on decreasing as we 
move from primary to secondary so let us revise once more after understanding the schematic diagram we come to the conclusion that in front of our kind of diffraction we will have one central maxima followed by secondary maxima and minima and the width of the central maxima will be equal to two times the width of the secondary maxima and number three intensity goes on decreasing as we move from primary to secondary that is the most intensive point will be the central maxima of the light beams found due to front of a diffraction so this is all about the theory and characteristics and operation of front of a diffraction in the next part of the video we will go further into that derivation and formula how to solve the numericals of front of a diffraction